Hey, this is Gary Seegers. And this is Chris Giannini. And this is the Winning Cures Everything podcast. Chris, we are going to break down the SEC West. All right, let's jump right into the fire here. I got Alabama at 12-0. I got them 8-0 in the SEC. I don't see anybody on here that's, uh, that's going to, you know, I think there will be competition. I think there will be close games. I don't think anybody has the talent to be able to go up against Nick Saban this much. I got you 11-1, and one, and it's just because I simply do not see you going two years back-to-back undefeated through the SEC. I mean, that might make sense. There is no bye week until I, the LSU game. I can't really tell you who you're going to lose to. It could be Florida State in week one. There is a gauntlet of Ole Miss at Texas A&M, Arkansas, and Tennessee. But those they've got three of those. You should smoke. You will probably play at least one of them close. Yeah, for some reason, and could that one team slip up and beat you? I think you're either going to lose to LSU or Auburn, and that's just because the LSU, on the, road. Game, the LSU game has become such a big rivalry game because that determines the West every year. Well, every year it is it is right after a bye week, and we both have bye weeks. And Ed Orgeron has made it his life goal. To beat Nick Saban. Well, because he knows if he beats Nick Saban, he's He's, he's got solidified. a lifetime contract. He's solidified. The one thing that nobody has been able to do, well, I guess, that Les was not able to do was consistently beat Nick. Now, he beat Nick but more than anybody else in the country has. Yeah, he, he was able to do it early. But, but the last five years, he hadn't been right. able to beat him. And he lost the national championship game to him, which was his downfall. That's right. And that's where everything went south with Les. Yeah. So that that's huge, and and not saying that you're gonna lose that game, but you could. Yeah, that's a very losable game. We've seen Alabama. If they're gonna it, lose, normally they lose in Tuscaloosa. Well, and that's what I was about to say. LSU has beaten them when they have in Tuscaloosa more than they've beaten them in Baton Rouge. Yeah, home field doesn't really matter when those two teams play. You're right. You just know that you you don't want to play anybody hard the week after that. You got that because right. you're gonna be beat up. And then the Auburn game. If you go into Auburn undefeated, Auburn will make it its life's mission to crush you. And if they've got a good quarterback? They can. They can beat you. They can. And so Malzahn, we know he can coach the quarterbacks. We know he can put points up if he wants to or, or you know, has time to scheme. I think if his season is lost, to save his job, he will be coaching for that game. Yeah. I so agree. I don't know who you're going to lose to. I just don't see you going two years back to back through the SEC and going undefeated both those years. Okay, Math- I mean Maddox, I can understand that. Numbers, statistics tell me you're going to lose a game. Yeah, I can understand that. Um, Arkansas, we've got them at six and six. I've got them at six and six. You you think a lot more highly of them. I've got them beating TCU, but I've got them two and six in conference. I got them losing to Texas A&M because they always do. I've got them losing at South Carolina because I believe in South Carolina. I've got them losing at Alabama, losing to Auburn. I've got them losing at Ole Miss because those that's a gauntlet right before Ole Miss, and they play on the road in Oxford. I've got them losing at LSU, and I've got them beating Missouri, beating Mississippi State, beating Coastal Carolina, beating New Mexico State, beat TCU, beat FAMU. You know, I, I don't see – I, I don't think this is going to be a very good team. I think Bielema loses his job, and I think that Mike Norvell from Memphis is going to take it. So He's I from disagree. Arkansas. I completely disagree. I, lo- I love Brett Bielema. He... He's he's like my spirit animal. He <laughs> loves to run the football. He loves to have big, super athletic, massive offensive linemen. He likes to push people around. I don't know that he's gotten that at Arkansas. I know that he's tried. He's had some good running backs. I don't think he's got one this year. They were counting on Raleigh Williams to come back, and, and he's out forever. Ever. Yeah. So I have actually have them losing to TCU because I think TCU is going to be really good. But I've, I've got them beating Auburn. And the reason I've got them beating Auburn in that game is Auburn is going to have to go on the road back-to-back weeks. They get Baton Rouge, LSU at Baton Rouge, the week before the Arkansas game. LSU is going to beat people up. Yeah. We might not win all the games that I have us winning, but we just talked about with the LSU Bama game. You just don't want to play anybody hard after them because you're going to be in the training room. Yeah. Because they're going to hit you. They're going to hit you hard. And on run, on, on offense, they're going to beat your defense up. They're going to bully you from the offensive line out. And, and that's how we're going to play football. So then they've got to go to Fayetteville the very next week. And I think that's where Brett Billman has a chance to win a big-time game. 
And Auburn always does this. Auburn always loses a game or two that they're supposed to win. This is true. It's the reason Malzahn's been on the hot seat the last three years, two years. Okay. So that's my that's my theory. I think they're going to be eight and four. Could they be seven and five? Sure. Could they win the TCU game? Absolutely. They could be nine I, and three. I don't think they're going to be nine and three. I think they'll overcorrect somewhere. the The law of averages will figure it out. They'll finish seven and five, eight and four. I got them at eight and four. I like them to bounce back. I think Brett Bielman gets off the hot seat. Last year he died at the end of the season. They lost a putrid game to Missouri. Just yeah. one of the most unwatchable football games. The end of that game was a textbook way how to not play football. Well, they they were I don't up know twenty four to seven at the half, and then got outscored twenty one to nothing in the second half. To, and to, turned in the ball my over eyes, and, the worst team in the SEC, one of the worst teams in all of Power Five college football. How that happens, I don't know. I don't know what happened to Brett. I don't know if he stroked out on the sidelines. I can't, I can't tell you. I know this. And well, then they, they, they turned happen. around and did the same thing to Virginia Tech. Yeah, they did well, but I think Virginia Tech's in. A much better team. Well, I agree, but it, it we're was talking one of those, about two completely different class they, teams. They were up twenty four to three on Virginia Tech early and got beat thirty five twenty four. Like I said, two completely different class of teams. I know that they had a big lead on them, but I could easily see them choking away a lead to a, a team like Virginia Tech, as opposed to Missouri. Well, Missouri should should not ever be able to score twenty four points on anybody. That's I, just that's not good. I understand that. All right, next up, we got Auburn. I've got Auburn at nine and three. See, I got, I got them six and two and in the conference. So we, we differ on all we're, we're off on two games. Now, I've got them losing at Clemson. I've got them losing at LSU. And I've got them losing at Alabama. I've got them beating everybody else on the schedule. So I got them the, the Arkansas loss. Yep. And I also have them at an A&M loss. I don't think that they're going to travel well. You think they're going to lose three straight games? Yeah. At LSU, at Arkansas, and at Texas A&M. What well, I'm really curious about Malzahn's situation after that bye week. I think he'll be coaching for his job going into A&M. Now, if he loses to Clemson, loses at LSU, and then loses at Arkansas? I mean, they could fire him during the off week. I don't know that they'll fire him because I, I, I don't think that Auburn is going to fire somebody midway through the season. Man, they might. But I think, I think they'll wait until the end of the year. Yeah, but I see think what happens going, in the in, game. going into a bye week and a guy coaching for his job coming out of it, I don't like those things. I, I Les Miles, it made LSU made it very clear, Les, you're going into the Auburn game coaching for your job. Now, we all assumed that Miles Alm was doing that too. But I don't think if Malzahn loses to LSU, I think he gets fired at the end of the year, but I don't think he gets fired the next day. No, you're probably right. That I, that game was a momentum game because they ended up coming back and winning, what, six straight? Yeah. I mean, they were like – Oh, no, it's huge. They were eight and one before they lost to Georgia. So I just see them find a, a slide. Now, they might or not seven lose – one. They might not lose all of those games. They could easily finish maybe eight and four. Maybe they could flip one of these. I just don't see them – I don't see him winning a lot of games. You, you don't really believe in the in the quarterback situation a whole lot, right? No, it, well, I don't. I don't believe in. I don't know that I believe in Malzahn as a head coach. I can understand. I that. would. I would love to have him as a coordinator. I want him running my offense. I you just, don't want him touching anything else. I don't know if I want him touching anything else. I can understand that. I can understand that. All right, next up, LSU, you boys down on the down on the Bayou. I got LSU at eleven and one. Got them 11-1 also. The only loss I've got for them is Alabama. Who do you have them losing to? Well, they'll either lose. It's just, once again, the law of averages. They'll either lose to Alabama, A&M, one of these teams on the road, I think. I don't think they'll lose a game at home. Um, I think that's kind of it. I don't know that any of the rest of these teams scare me. They're not going to Knoxville and losing to Tennessee. Who did you have them losing to on your – On my sheet, I have them losing to A&M the last game of the season. In LSU for a chance to go twelve and zero. No, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and that's just because that's that seems law like of a, averages. That seems like an LSU, a very LSU, a very Coach O thing to do. Yeah, I mean, especially like it, it really wouldn't matter. Even if they lost that, they would still go to the SEC They'll championship the SEC game SEC according to yours. Yeah, if they get the win at Alabama, I, I think they're going to. I just don't think they're going to go undefeated. I don't I think understand. Bama's going to go undefeated. defeat it. They could easily lose to Bama and then win out. I mean, that could that could be the exact same scenario. Yeah, that could easily in, happen. In my scenario, I want to depict them winning that game. I can understand. So, but that's but that's it. If we're going to work under what realistically is probably going to happen, they'll probably lose to Bama and then they'll win out and they'll go eleven and zero. And then I just think Bama will lose somewhere else. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. So we've got LSU both at eleven and one. 
Um, Mississippi State, I got them at six and six. Two and six in the conference. I think they win all their non-conference games. I think they get BYU at home. They're, they're coming off a bye week after losing, in my eyes. They've got LSU at Georgia at Auburn. I think they lose all three of those. And then they've got a bye week before BYU comes in. And I think that those three games, LSU at Georgia and at Auburn, will gear them up for BYU. I, I, because BYU is nothing compared to those other teams. And I think they win that game in Starkville. I think they beat Kentucky in Starkville. They're going to lose at Texas A&M, I believe. They'll beat UMass. And then they'll lose to Alabama. They'll lose at Arkansas. And then I've got them beating Ole Miss in the Egg Bowl to get to a bowl game. So I've got them at 5-7. and seven. Okay. And, I mean, you know, I have, I have a lot of these things going on. I mean, you know. One game here, one game one there. One game here, one game there. So they they could end up six and six. They could end up four and eight. There's and I've got Ole Miss the exact same. I've got Ole Miss at five and seven, and that could go one way or the other depending on the egg bowl. Who do you who do you think's gonna win that ball game? I think State is, and the reason is is it's in Starkville. I think it's. I think Dan Mullins has made his life missions. I'm just gonna beat Ole Miss. I'm gonna be mediocre at football, and I'm gonna beat Ole Miss, and, and I'll he, never get fired. He'll keep his job forever if he does that. Yeah. He'll he'll they'll never he'll never get fired. Last year he made a bowl game going five and seven. He's the first power five team to not have six wins to go to a bowl game in years. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And, and and the thing is, is good for him because old Mi- not old Mi- Mississippi State was in the cellar before he got there. I mean they yeah. were they were they've been to five straight bowl games. Themselves. He's taken them to five straight bowl games. I'm not being critical. Of them. I'm not beating them up. But that's that's who they are. And and right now six and six five and sevens. A hell of a lot better than who they used to be. Especially in this division. Especially yeah. in this division. Therein lies the problem. They are in a division with Alabama and LSU. And every now and then, Auburn, Auburn jumps up there. A&M's been up there in the past. And they've been able to beat some of those teams. That's right. And every year, I think they're going to... A lot of these bad teams are going to be this way. And a lot of the good teams are going to be reversed. They're all going to win a game they're not supposed to win. And they're going to lose a game they're not supposed to lose. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So, so I got they, both of those schools going five and seven. All right, so Ole Miss, winning. you've got five and seven. I've got Ole Miss at seven and five. Whew. I got them beating California. I got them Whew. going three and zero to start off with, and they got a bye week before they go to Tuscaloosa. And I think that that is going to be their Super Bowl, and I think they're going to lose it. And when they lose that, I think that immediately means they lose to Auburn. I think they will beat Vanderbilt because you know you can't get up every week. But if they're not up for Auburn, I think they get up for Vanderbilt, especially in Oxford, because of the way that Vanderbilt drubbed them last year. Uh, now Vanderbilt has historically had Ole Miss's number. It, they well, that has been the Ole one Miss. Team. Ole Miss has had like they've got a winning record against them. But yes, Vanderbilt always plays them close. At, like no matter how bad Vandy is, that's it doesn't right. Matter. The years that Vanderbilt can't win an SEC game, they'll lose to Ole Miss, but they will lose. It'll be in super like a close. Last second field goal. Now, I've got Ole Miss uh, losing to LSU. I've got them beating Arkansas, losing at Kentucky. Now, obviously, Kentucky, I've got it 6-6. Six and six. I, You know, that it could go either way. Ole Miss sure. could end up winning that, in, like, but it's in Lexington, so I, I went with the home team. Uh, I've got them beating Texas A&M because Hugh Freeze has had Kevin Sumlin's number, and I think at this point Kevin Sumlin is, is going to be done. Um, you know, I mean, there's no telling here. And then I've got them losing to Mississippi State. So I think going to Starkville, that that rivalry, if you've been paying attention to our our stuff here lately, like that rivalry is intense right now. There is hatred, hardcore on both sides, and State beat them like a drum last year. But I think I think State's got the number again. You know, I've got them at seven and five. They're not going to go to a bowl game because they've got a postseason ban, but it won't matter. I think they've got they've got enough talent to be able to beat some of these teams and Hugh Freeze. Uh, hired in Phil Longo, who is who was the offensive coordinator at Sam Houston State. He does some really crazy stuff. They are going to put up points in bunches. They've got a bunch of talent on offense and whatnot. Defense is still going to be putrid, I think. I mean, they, they hired in, I, don't, I forget the guy's name, but he was like a defensive line coach at Auburn. You know, I mean, it, which I think it's Wes something. I, I forget. But either way. It guy that doesn't have really any experience. I don't think they've got any talent on defense, but I think they're going to outscore a lot of these teams. So we'll see. We shall see. Texas A and M is the last one up. Tell me what you're thinking first. So I have them on 
on our sheet. I have them going nine and three. Once again, like Tennessee, like Kentucky, I looked at it a day or two later and said, I'm wrong. Like, I don't, I don't think they're going to be terrible. I think they're probably going to be eight and four and, and they could be, if they were seven and five, it wouldn't shock me, but I don't see them being worse than that. So you think they're going to be terrible. I've, I've got them beating UCLA to start the season off. I, I think Kevin Sumlin's a good coach. There was a day and a time when he was this close, inches away from getting the Dallas Cowboys job, and they were gonna, they were they were gonna fire their coach and hire Jason someone. Garrett. Yeah, to hire in. You someone. know, like he didn't forget how to coach. I think he's gotten very frustrated with his players. I think he's trying to discipline kids in a way that they don't like being disciplined. And so he's had a lot of quarterbacks quit. They've transferred. They've left school. They've gone elsewhere. But that doesn't mean he's not a good coach. It just means he's got to find a quarterback that's tough enough to stick around. I think that's his problem. I've got Texas to, or Texas A&M at, at 6-6 six and six this year. So that and means he's gone. At 6-6, six he, six, he is gone. I think he's done. I think he's out. So let's let's uh, play the Butch Jones game. Real I've quick. got him. I've got him at three and five. Okay. Hold on, let's let's okay. go through this, through right? So, and here's the reason why I've got him losing at UCLA, and then I've got them going on a four game winning streak, right? But here's the problem: Nickel State, Louisiana Lafayette, at Arkansas, which isn't really at Arkansas because it's in Arlington, Arlington. Texas, um, and then South Carolina at home. I don't think that you have to have a great quarterback to be able to beat those teams. I think that they can, they can out talent those teams. But you, so wait a minute. Your logic is, and this is where we just disagree. I guess you think that UCLA is a better team than South Carolina. I think or UCLA Arkansas? in the first game of the year in the Rose Bowl will be a better team because I think Rosen will be on fire in that game. It's a big time national TV game, and remember, it's all about players getting up. You know, for one game. That Arkansas game is going to be a big-time national TV game, too. I don't think that's going to be that big of a game. Yeah, all those are all into all the – they're not going to put a game in Cowboys Stadium and it not be a primetime game. I, you know, you may be right. I mean, it, it, it's going to be the biggest – It's going to be the biggest SEC game of the weekend, yes. for sure. Uh, because you got Florida at Kentucky, Georgia and Mississippi State, Auburn and Missouri. That will probably be the 230 you know, CBS. Alabama game. and Vanderbilt. Yeah, it'll probably be the 230 – CBS game. That's going to be a big game. It'll be a big game. I'm with you. That's a bigger game than the UCLA game. I agree. And I think South that's Carolina, why I think that, and I that, think South Carolina is worlds better. That's worlds why better I think that Texas A&M can beat Arkansas in Arlington as opposed to beating UCLA on the road. I don't think UCLA is going to be great, but I, I don't think that, you know, someone has this thing of, of beating non-conference teams, right? He always does it. I don't think – he's always got the better quarterback, though. I don't think he's got that this year. The, the guy they've got starting is But they will Jake have a Hubenack. much better team. They won't have a better quarterback, but they will have a much better team. I think crazy things happen in the Rose Bowl. And I'm telling you, I think <laughs> okay. UCLA wins this ball game. Okay. I think Mora needs that home win to, to save him for a little while. But here's the deal. All right, so I've got him going on a four-game winning streak, you know, at Arkansas – well, against Arkansas – and then South Carolina. And then I think that, again, like they have for the past however many seasons, they are putting everything they got into the Alabama game because they get them at home again. It's at Kyle Field. But I think they lose. I don't think they got enough to be able to compete. And when they lose that game, then they got to go to Gainesville the next week. They lose Florida. They lose Florida. Then they got a bye week. They got Mississippi State at home. I think they win that game. I think they lose to Auburn at home because I think Auburn's got the better quarterback and, and the better team, really. And then you've got New Mexico at Ole Miss, at LSU. I think they go to Oxford and lose. I think they go to LSU and lose. Yeah. So from 6-4, and four, they end up dropping to 6-6. Six and six. So I think, I think they're going to end up 8-4. and four. Yeah. yeah. You've got them beating LSU. I know you don't so, really think they're going to No, no, LSU. but that, I don't think they're going to beat LSU, but I just think – I think LSU Law of gonna averages a, is going to be somewhere. If LSU slips up and like loses to Ole Miss, which could easily happen, every year Ole Miss has nothing to play for. They they beat the hell out of LSU, and I don't know why. Frustrates me greatly. Um, I I just see them. I think them better. So let's let's play the Butch Jones game. Okay. 
At eight and four, he saves his job. Eight and four, I think he's fine. At six and six, he's he's shot out of the can. He's fired. Gone. Yeah. Seven and five. Seven and five, I think he's Safe? I think he's gone. You think he's gone? I think he's seven gone to seven and five. five. I think Texas A and M pays a whole bunch of money. They've got a brand new hundreds of like half a billion yeah. dollar stadium basically. They've got a lot of money tied they're, up in this. They've stadium. got a lot of money tied up in this program and he has shown over and over again he he can't win big without a, a transcendent talent like Johnny Manziel. Without Johnny Manziel, this guy is 8 and 4, 8 and 5. Seven and five, as much, whatever. As much as I don't want the West to be any better, he has not won nine games in a year since Manziel left. This is this is the landing spot that I want to see Chip Kelly. I think he'd be fantastic. I don't, I don't. Being an LSU fan, being a Bama fan, like we don't need the West to yeah. be any harder than it we, already is. We don't is. need Chip Kelly in but the SEC West. But this is this is where I want to see him. I think they will pay him, and rules. they and they have more money than Notre Dame. Yeah. They have more money than Texas. They have more money than everybody in the country, probably. Yeah, yeah, they do. Absolutely, they, yeah. they got all that old oil money. Yeah, they've got more than everybody. They've got the number one uh, biggest athletic budget in the country. In the country, it's insane. So, that's that's my go to landing spot for Chip if he gets. Who fired. all do you think is gone at the end of this year? So yeah, all right. So let's run down the. Let's fire. let's do that, and then we're gonna wrap this thing up. All right. I think well let, let's let's just go go down the list of of danger quarter uh, coaches. Arkansas, Brett Bieleman. I think he's gone, you think he's there. I think he's safe and you think he's gone. Malzahn. I think Malzahn is safe after this year. I think he's safe after this year. I don't think he's gonna have a great season, but I don't think they're gonna fire him. Um down to Butch Jones. Butch Jones. I think I think Jones is safe at eight and four. Dead on arrival. You think he's gone? Gone. All right. And then A&M, Kevin Sumlin. I've got him safe. You've got him safe. I think he's out of here. I'm really curious to see what happens at 7-5. and I think Texas A&M will be quicker to pull the trigger because they've got more money, and they are in a tougher division, and they can't afford time. I think think Tennessee can afford time. No, you're probably right. I mean, they've got a brand-new AD. They're still trying to get it figured out as far as what they want to do. And Phil Fulmer was just hired as an assistant to the president. And I think that he's in Butch's corner. It's really weird that the athletic director that they hired is not is the guy that yeah. he's like the guy that had had Fulmer fired. Yeah. And now Fulmer is an assistant to the president. Like, yeah. It's it's a got weird a lot of conflicting. It's a weird thing, but if, if Butch is like I've got him at eight and four, even if he's at seven and five, I think he's probably safe for this season. So that's what I was wondering. And this about. is what they do: it, it, they they blame it on well, they were a really young team, and you know they've got a first time starting quarterback, that first time was starting my running thing back. Is, like they is, were injured last year. Is their quarterback going to be able to win seven football games in the SEC? I think they've got enough talent. I think he is recruited exceptionally well. I don't think he can out coach a lot of these guys. No. No. But I think that he's got enough talent to be able to win some of these games. I don't know there's a single SEC game. And I'm not saying that the coach in the SEC is great right now. We talked about that yeah. last week, about how it's not un- unbelievable. I don't think there's a single SEC game where he's going to be the best coach on the field. I think you're probably right. And that includes Orgeron. And I'm not saying Orgeron's a great coach. He might be a better coach than Barry Odom at Missouri. Maybe. Man, it's really hard to – I don't mean to beat up on Barry Odom in Missouri, but they just don't have any talent. Well, they they got it's, nothing going it's on. It's really there. really hard to judge him. So yeah. you are you are correct. That's our SEC breakdown. All right, that's uh, that's going to wrap it up for us today. Uh, we you know we're going to worry about going over lines uh, in the next episode. You got so. so let's let's do this real fast. You've got an SEC championship of another a three. Yeah, let's do You've that. Got the trilogy. I've got Alabama and Florida again. The truth. And and here's the here's the thing. I've got Georgia at ten and two, but I've got them at six and two in the conference with a loss to Florida. I've got Florida at seven and one in the conference, and they go nine and three because they had to play Michigan and uh, Florida State. Well, even if they even if Georgia finishes seven and one as well, they would still have they would a loss still, to yeah. the cocktail party. In your that, I, I think Georgia loses to Auburn, um, but yeah, it's, it wouldn't matter if they went seven and one if they lose to Florida. Um, I think Florida goes to the SEC championship game. I think Alabama goes at 12-0. and 0. And, I mean, I think Alabama ends up winning again. 
Um, because I don't think McIlwain can beat Saban. No. I just don't believe I that. I completely agree with that. I don't believe that Florida gets to a uh, a New Year's Six Bowl. I don't either. I do think that Georgia will get there. I think LSU and Georgia both make it to New Year's Six games. Wow. Yeah. So I have I have LSU and South Carolina. I think South Carolina is the rising star. I think it's a quarterback league. I think they got the second best. I like them better than Georgia. I think LSU beats them. If you replace everything I just said with LSU with Bama, it's probably the same it's, thing. Yeah, same thing. Same thing. So it wouldn't matter. The, the West will win yes. this year again. This is Gary Seegers, your co-host and owner of Winning Cures Everything, the best sports blog and podcast in the South. There are a ton of ways that you can connect with us. First, check out the website, winningcureseverything.com. Second, give us a like on Facebook, facebook.com slash winningcureseverything. Third, follow us on Twitter, at winningcures, or myself, at ProSevereGary, or at Chris B. Giannini. Four, email the show, winningcureseverything at gmail.com. Fifth, download, subscribe to, and review the podcast. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, SoundCloud, Google Play, and all of your favorite podcast apps. We'll have new shows up every Tuesday and Friday morning along with different articles throughout the week. Remember, winningcureseverything.com.